Are you, are you okay? Inside myself, in what kind of way? My, my bowels, my soul. Oh, well, hard one. <coughs> you're all right. I think uh, you're yeah. fine. Aye, you're happy to do this. No, oh, right. what is happiness? You and we'll find it in the next hour. <laughs> <laughs> Especially for any funny noises coming through that start vibrating. The the reason that Gavin has mentioned vibrations is mm. because I'm right, here. right. <laughs> <laughs> Hell yeah! Hi. Um, <laughs> no wonder I've got a dry mouth. <laughs> It's because right outside the studio where we are doing the podcast, there are roadworks going on, and every now and then you might hear and possibly, well, we'll feel the vibrations, but you might hear some sort of vibrations going on. I think roadworks is an underestimation. They are properly resurfacing the entire road. Well, I think actually, I don't even believe that we're in Wishaw. I believe we're in a container getting transported. <laughs> we're kind of swaying about. I think we should do that as we're moving up. Well, it's funny you should ask that, you. <laughs> Jesus. I so oh, oh. <laughs> We're gonna wake up in Uruguay or something. <laughs> oh, oh. Where do all the monkeys come from? <laughs> there are no windows and it does feel like we're in a shipping container. What's that as I said when I first came in? I, I thought you were gonna bring me in with a sack of my head and pull it off. <laughs> like, what is it you want to know? It's like it's Channel Four S A S what is it? <laughs> okay. Right, right, right. So we need to now load the titles before, right. before we start officially. I mean, that bit will stay. All right. Right, but it's just, you're, you're, we're warmed up now. We've explained what the roadworks are mm. and the vibrations, should they come again? <laughs> I don't know if I'll, at my age, I don't know if I'll ever come again. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know that? That might be something we'll start the podcast with. What, my vibrations? What was no, that? What it'll was... be a long podcast, I tell you. It's like playing with a wet lettuce and then Stuart just comes out. <laughs> <laughs> Roll the titles. <laughs> Where do all the monkeys come from? <laughs> It's like playing with a wet lettuce and then Stuart just comes out. <laughs> the episode where we had the old sex tape and the mullet got a severe tug in. My comedy shagging face mm -hmm. that is used in that show is kind of my shagging face. <laughs> Not to make light of what you're talking about, it's a bit like Del Boy Rodney. <laughs> no, it was fuck all that. <laughs> uh, Hello and welcome to You and Cat's Uncut <laughs> Podcast. There's a lot of giggling going on because... Um, I keep thinking of his wet lettuce. And who can blame you? <laughs> uh, Gavin Mitchell is here. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> Thank you. I love you individually and as a group. Thank you. <sighs> mm. <sighs> Have we peaked already? <laughs> I, I do want yeah, to... Yeah, so I, Sudan. <laughs> <laughs> I do want to talk about your lettuce. <laughs> well, you mean you brought it up? I, <laughs> <laughs> Iceberg wet, spin it about in one of those dry things. Uh -huh. mm. it, I, how old are you, if you don't mind me asking? Uh, is that somebody I can phone? <laughs> um, I'm oh, I'm fifty eight now. I'll be fifty nine this year. Yeah, I'm nearly the big six. How does that feel? What, my lettuce? <laughs> my wet lettuce? Or just how does it feel? I don't know. I'm not the first person to do it. Do you know what I mean? There's a... <laughs> <laughs> how does it... What do you mean, how does it how feel? Does it how feel? does it feel to be a... What? No, 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 to be 60 nearly. He's not, he's but 58. I'm, I'm no, I'm no, 58. No, 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 but, you, but before you know it... You're... Touch me again, I'll break your fucking arm. <laughs> <laughs> For those listening to the podcast, not seeing it, that was you, not me. Yes, I was Yeah, a car would never have a problem, would it? I'm like, come on, I'll show you my letters. <laughs> <laughs> is that an iceberg or is it, you know, So just pleased to see you. I'm, I'm happy to see you as, my, as well, my man. I picked you up, I picked you up from, you, from your flat, but, and it was it was nice having a chat with you. And then Kat phoned us while we are in the car coming in here. She did indeed. And she says, have you got that big ride with you? Are, are you still a big ride? <laughs> I really don't think I'm the person that should be saying anything to that, really. I'm just trying, 
draw a veil over that. Am I a big ride? No. No, I wouldn't say so. No. All right, ladies. <laughs> See the way you said that? You did say that like Bobby the Barman. And he in his way was a bit of a pin-up, maybe. <laughs> right, <And> like to, <laughs> to, to who exactly? To, to who? <laughs> drunk people in Craig Lang. Oh thanks, the drunks. Thanks. Um, yeah, and that pretty as much kind of reflects my own life. I bet you a pin up to drunks. Normally drunk <laughs> men uh, and tramps. <laughs> um, <laughs> Sounds like a share song. <laughs> This one's called Drunk Men and Tramps. Um, I suppose, he, well, he always failed in love, Bobby, you know. But he tried. He tried. Mm. God loves a trier. And he, he did try, but I always went horribly, horribly wrong. But see, in real life, did you not get hit upon by lots of women that, you know... W- wanted to see my tea towel? Yeah. Um, <laughs> no. <coughs> no, you get a bit of that. Mm-hmm. But obviously, I, you know, I, I've never been tempted by people who... Why would you want to be with somebody because they fancy you because you're Bobby the Bar? <laughs> <laughs> it's a bit kind of doomed for the start, that. Have you ever had I really a- like you because you're a bit of a wanker on telly. <laughs> <laughs> I really <laughs> fancy you. Are you a wanker in real life? <laughs> What like kind of wanker are you? Can I get you in the sack and find out if you're a wanker? Well, back to the letters. Um, <laughs> Some women might like to tug a mullet. I don't I'm sorry. Know. <laughs> <laughs> it was a wig cat, I'm afraid. Yeah, but you know... The- <laughs> well, uh, well, it has been tugged. Uh, there was that famous episode where we had the old sex tape. That's right. Uh, and we on had the kitchen the, table. On the kitchen table. And the mullet got a severe tugging. See, see, that, that. see that sex scene? Yeah. On, on, were you, what were you wearing? Uh, what, yeah. Not below. Yeah. below. What's, yeah. give, go and give us a secret when it comes to a sex so scene. Bo- what, my, my penis? Uh, I, know your, I, know your, I know your penis is there, but obviously you, you're, you're, you're not penis isn't out and you're not touching skin to well, skin. Well, normally, well, it's, I, as we speak, normally when I'm working as I am just now, I have my penis out. All oh, right, okay. So, uh, that's so I'm sitting here <laughs> under the table with it out. Uh, it's just one of these things. It's how I work some of my contracts. Uh, <laughs> let's just get a wee bit of air about me. Um, no, no, what we did was, uh, it was, it is was it very odd. Is it taped down? Is, is your is penis taped down? Tape because it's enormous. Um, <laughs> Roll of it's, it's like a draft excluder. And so they, they tend to, they have to, they bring in an army of guys who tape it in. <laughs> like a kangaroo's tail. Like, <laughs> Like Skippy the Bush kangaroo when they used to nail his tail down to make him talk. <laughs> <laughs> they, do, they do that with my cock. Uh, uh, just get it down on the floor. <laughs> right, we're ready for a take. Can you move, Gap? No, I'm all right. We'll, I'll be okay with that. Let's go for the action. <laughs> um, so, no. so that scene, yeah. it, it looks like you're naked, but you're clearly not because no. it wouldn't be allowed. So what is keeping you from... Um, I, mean, we say me? I, I mean, yeah, because see, when you're actually well, because I, rem- I remember, right, when we did it, when we, when we, when we did I, see, when you dry ride, yes, or if you get any sort of a friction, How did in, we get here? No, 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 but when you ever get any sort, I of thought you were going to ask me. So, what are you doing at Christmas? <laughs> <laughs> If you got your presents and no, ah, uh, well, one present but price when, to buy, but, but I'm ready but to go. There, when there was a wee bit of friction down there, yes. things start to move, mm. and it's out of your control. So when you're doing a sex I'm scene, I'm a professional, my darling. But when you're doing a sex scene, clearly you're conscious of that. So what stops you from getting excited, and what are they using down there to stop you from getting excited? No, it doesn't work like that. I kind of <coughs> well, you're normally you're just doing your job. There's lots of things that stop you from getting excited. For instance, when we did that scene, it was eight in the morning in February, uh, <laughs> in a cold, cold studio in Mary Hill. So it was like a budgie's tongue downstairs. <laughs> And how many people were watching um, in the studio? Quite a few. I mean, we tried to do a close set. And also the woman uh, that I was doing it with was a professional, shall we say, uh, which I didn't know. And the boys were winding me up. They knew I was nervous. So I was in makeup. And one of the runners came and said, oh, that's a girl arrived who's going to do the scene with Gav and said to makeup girls, do you want to see her? And I'm like, I bring her in. And I was like, yeah, bring her in, bring her in. You know, girls bound to be a bit nervous, you know. <laughs> <laughs> and they bring this girl in and she just looked me up and down chewing gum gun. 
you the one I'm bumping, eh? <laughs> I, I am. Um, uh, I've had worse. <laughs> oh, right. <laughs> Right, confidence <laughs> broken, so that and off was, she went. Was, was that her job? She had been a pole dancer, I believe, and a stripper, and had been out the uh, the business for a wee bit. Ah, right, but, okay. So yeah. when we came to do the scene, it was kind of improvised, and trying to come up with these ideas. And so some, is this back in the day before they had, like, there's because there's now intimacy coordinators, yeah. I think they're called, which yeah. is basically... There are. Yeah, yeah. Most film sets have an intimacy yeah. coordinator. That's their job. It is, to yeah, basically yeah. choreograph the pumping. Come here, let me just move your hand. Yeah. So I'm an inter- intimacy coordinator. <laughs> no, it's so that it's respectful. Yeah, yeah. Ah, right. Ah, yeah. Okay, did you have one of them on set? Oh, fuck no. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was over a lot of stair carpet. No. <laughs> <laughs> You know, you see the outtakes. Oh, honestly, need to get tasers to get me off of. No, I, I can't. <laughs> <laughs> I just imagine all the crew standing in retainers. Yeah. Bobby, get off her! People had a book it. They were putting bets on it. <laughs> Long's this got it. Get a hoop round his neck. <laughs> um, no. <laughs> no, it wasn't like that at all. No, I was very, very nervous. And this girl was brilliant. And so we made different suggestions. One of them being she got up on the kitchen table. And she went, I can do that. And uh, what else will we do? And she said, I think Michael said, uh, the director said, maybe if you try putting your legs around his neck. Aye, no problem. <laughs> so we, we kind of just get the moves right. And I went and she went, boof, with her legs right. And, and I went, Jesus, it was like a clamp. Your head. And I'm like, could you, could you just ease off a wee bit? You've, you've got my mullet. <laughs> I can't even move my wig. <laughs> and then I said to Michael, how much do I have to take off here? And he said, oh, just take off your top, just roll down your bottom slightly. We're not going to see anything. I'm like, oh, okay. So I did that. Going for it, I'm really nervous. <laughs> Michael says, right, anybody else that doesn't have to be here, you can leave the set. And they did. And as I turned around, they're saying, running up at speed. And actually, I turned around and she's starkers, right, apart from a wee thong. And she kind of slid down the table and she was kind of rubbing against me a bit. And I'm like, oh. <laughs> so the- <laughs> So my shagging face, my comedy shagging face mm-hmm. that is used in that show, is kind of my shagging face. <laughs> That's not a pretty sight. Well, it's not a pretty like sight. like a gerbil having a fit. You like that kind of thing, <laughs> right? and, and so when eventually they said, cut, you've never seen an actor jump off a woman quicker than really? you're like, oh. and I was like, do we have to go again? Uh, one take wonder. Aye. Oh, thank God. We've got a nice to meet you. Bye-bye. <laughs> and away you went. And away I went. Have you ever met her since? Have and I went back to the, the Winnie and uh, these two heads popped out of Winnie Bago. It was just Greg and Ford. Like, How did that go? <laughs> <laughs> a couple of bastards. But it's funny because there was a time I used to do naked. <laughs> no, wouldn't now. But I used to do a lot of naked stuff, like a lot of sketches. But who'll take their clothes off? Gav, Gav will do <laughs> <laughs> I've been naked with various people over the years, Melvin Hayes and various people. But years ago, I played Casanova on stage, and I volunteered stupidly to be naked. And it was a pet hate of mine as if you were watching theatre and you see somebody after a sex scene, and they get out of bed and they've got their pants on, and they go, oh, that was fantastic. And I just thought, that really annoys me. Why do people do that? Why don't they just get up? And put their pants on. Mm-hmm. Not gratuitously, but it just, you go, yeah, because that's what you do. It's yeah. your life. Aye. So Aye. where did you have to do that then with your... Everywhere I could, God, everywhere <laughs> I could. <laughs> Bussies. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> bin lorries. Uh, Scud it into me, I'm bonkers. Uh, no, I don't know. Surely know. it's... The Royal like... Lyceum Theatre, my darling. Oh, really? The Tron Theatre. So you're talking Newcastle. in front of hundreds and... Oh, like... I've had my bow butte in many, <laughs> many places. And, and are you comfortable with that? Or do you just feel you have to do it because it's the role? Um, it lent itself to it, I think. We did do a fair bit of nudity, but it wasn't gratuitous. It was things like I said, I'd get out of bed and I'd put my pants on. Would your penis be on show to the audience? No. Depended how cold the theatre was. <laughs> you know, sometimes you're smacking that about in a big glass of hot water. Just... 
Because people think that part of the plot is that's interesting. He's a hermaphrodite. <laughs> <laughs> so see, as an actor, when you get a script, any kind of script, it could be theatre, telly, and stuff. What, uh, do I get my cock out in this? Exactly. <laughs> He's a train driver. <laughs> Through the tunnel? <laughs> <laughs> what is it that you look for when you are doing that, when you're reading a script? Do I get my time? cock out in this? <laughs> you know what I'll, I mean? I'll though. take the roll. <laughs> cock out on page 53. No, just phone major. There's no cock coming out in this. <laughs> Why have you sent me this? <laughs> what gives you the fear, though, or what makes you like want to take a roll? You know, is it emotion? Is it pumping? Is it. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's, that's no, it's not. Uh, I don't know, really. I mean, I think it's like anything we act in. It's it's variety, really. It's just mm. what tickles your fancy at that point. I think you become an actor to do lots of different things. So, I've been really lucky. You know, everybody says, obviously, you know me for still game and or comedy a lot of the time. But I was a straight actor and. Your uh, last, the big Netflix one, you were a Russian czar. Yeah, what? the last czars. Yeah. What was your part in that? Uh, I was, I've forgotten his full name now, but he was basically, he sh he's the guy who should have been the Tsar. He was the brother to the Tsar that passed away, but Nicholas took over and he kind of guided Nicholas when he was a young man. And, and kind of through him, he started the revolution in a way, he made huge mistakes. So but he was quite an evil right wing bugger. So a good, brilliant part. Good part. Yeah. And I'm guessing in that you had to sound sort of Russian? No. No. Uh, no, it was kind of RP. Because, uh, you know, he, he was very sort of like that. He was just very well spoken and things. But uh, because somebody spoke about it, there was on a review show, uh, and the woman who was doing the review show said, Oh, this is for the great series, and you're brilliant, Gavin. And, and she's about a fan and stuff. And then they had it in the review show, and every other reviewer uh, hated it. And, they, and it was Janice's first eyes. Janice said, There's a lot of good Scottish talent on this, you know, and Gavin Mitchell and various other and Scottish director and all this stuff. And uh, what was it? You, you didn't like him in it. And one of the reviewers said, well, I don't know why they were talking in that silly voice, why they were doing that silly voice. I said, what do you mean, like <laughs> RP? And whereas, you know, other people were talking in sort of northern voices. I said, well, I think it was to, you know, delineate the difference between upper and lower class. Not, yeah. How, what, what, what would you have liked? Would you have preferred they spoke in Russian? And I went, yeah. <laughs> and you thought, well, six weeks, <laughs> six parts here. Please hang over there if you don't mind. We will all talk like this all the time. That will not at all be fucking annoying. <laughs> and then the, and the other person, it's a fair yeah. point, isn't it? I it's couldn't like, take it seriously I... because of Bobby the Barman. And, and think, that was one of the reviews. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and I was like, well, I'm no actually fucking Bobby the Barman. <laughs> And the problem about being an actor is you like play different things. You know, you're a dream weaver, a creator of worlds, as it were. So fuck you, you daft review bitch. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry if I've gone too far. You would think that a reviewer would know that, that you play different roles, a no, variety of a roles. Lot, sometimes. But do you, do, you, do you find that you're pigeonholed in, that people just instantly look yeah. at you? Is that, is Bobby? Yeah, a lot of time. A lot of time. I mean... So does it piss you off? Yeah and no, you know. I mean, it's nice. People who know me or people who know my work don't. Uh, but a lot of people, I think it's lack of imagination. I think it, a lot of that's about the business nowadays. I just think people don't think, further and we're doing this, and they look at somebody and go, oh, you've got a beard. Uh-huh. Nah, we're looking for somebody without a beard. <laughs> With our razors. <laughs> <laughs> people, I think people really want things in a plate nowadays, you know, additions and stuff. And even this kind of self-tape culture we have and things like that. How are you finding that? Because basically, if you don't know what that is, you know a lot of acting roles, you're videoing yourself, yeah. or so getting your pal to video it, to send it to the casting person rather than sort of standing in front of them. I'm guessing that started kind of... Pre-COVID or COVID? Yeah, it started just pre-COVID and then a lot of people have gone for it. And now, rather than it opening up, it seems to be going the other way. A lot of people are using it for theatre now as well. Uh, and I think it's a really t terrible way to work. I think it's awful. I think it's awful if you're an actor because a lot of the time you're just doing these things in isolation against a wall or whatever and then you send them off into the ether and you don't, get any feedback. You never hear back. You never you? hear back. That's like, what I don't did understand. they get them? Did they not get them? And you're getting no feedback if 
Sure they liked let's. it. They didn't like it. Or could he try? Or, But the main thing, I went, I was in a room addition in a few weeks ago or whatever. First time I'd been in a room with people for God knows how long. It's so nice to be in a room. <laughs> it's nice to, to be back you. out. That's why we got you on. Even it's out. a dark room because my eyes can't adjust to light yet. <laughs> but um, so <laughs> went into this room. The first thing that happens is the director goes, hi, how you doing? You worked with my father once. I went, oh, really? Who's your dad? And he says who his dad. I'm like, oh, God. So we then start talking about that and the job that I'd done with his dad. And I told an anecdote about that. Probably shot myself in the foot. And then, <laughs> uh, but yeah, that, and it's, you know, you had a laugh, get to know each yeah. other, have a bit of banter. Then when you come to do the actual script, he's like, okay, can we try it again? And he gives you a bit of direction. So you do it two, three times. So you've, you've got some kind of vibe. Are you getting on? Do you like each other? Uh, you're on the same page. And can you take direction? Yeah. And you kind of want that. I mean, you could turn around and, and look at something and go, yeah, he's very good in that take. He's brilliant. He looks great. He sounds great. That's the man, but then that person might turn up, and you just don't get on, or yeah. an arsehole, or yeah. you know, that's. So I don't like it. You know, is this what you've always wanted to do? See, when you were like wee Gavin, wee Gavin Mitchell, what, did, Gavin you, Mitchell. what did you want to be? I wanted to be a geisha. <laughs> no. <laughs> do you like small feet? <laughs> yeah, I love having my feet bound up. <laughs> uh, <laughs> No, I, uh, I don't know. I think I was uh, lots of things. My generation, you know, everybody wanted to be an astronaut or all those kind of things. So all that kind of stuff. I think privately, I probably did want to be an actor, but you would never admit that uh, from where I. So came when you from. left school, then where did you go when you left school? Well, when I left school, I think I was that generation where I was kind of popped in front of telly a lot. So I watched a lot of TV and I read a lot and I did impersonations of people. And even though I've got a big brother, but it's 10 years between us. So I was kind of only child and we moved around a lot. And so going to lots of different schools and things like that and having to prove yourself, I was the kind of classic cliche of trying to make people laugh. The funny so, one. So you didn't get a doing, mm. basically. Um, so there was a bit of that. So you were the class clown? A wee bit, a wee bit. Uh, Gavin will do that. Aye, I, I, I do things like I, the damn thing. Like, I'll just fucking put my shoulder up. I got a laugh. <laughs> <laughs> um, there was a bit of that, and then my big love was art. Was my first love really, and I wanted to be an artist, uh, and that's what I was really, really good at. And I used to write a bit, but acting just felt like no, that wasn't. You couldn't do that from where I came from. Do you still draw? Yeah, yeah, I still draw and paint. I uh, didn't know that. Yeah, yeah, no, I, I furiously collect art equipment, so like addiction, that and books. But I um. So when did the acting thing happen for you? It kind of happened by accident, you know. It was a bit of a dare, really. It came about because through art. How really. old were you? Oh, by that time, I, I mean, I did daft wee bits and bobs. I used to do various things. I'd done other jobs at labour, and I used to work with Rab Noakes, uh, managing bands and. Uh, stuff like that for a wee while did various things and then by chance I was on the underground one night and bumped into my mate Paddy and he was going to do an all night uh, session at the Citizens Theatre painting and he said hold on you paint don't you like, fancy coming in doing, having a laugh doing an all night and I'd just come back for Exeter or something had a gal in a scrumpy <laughs> Yeah, folks, I, I find it kind of broadens the mind when you're painting. <laughs> a gal and a scrumpy. A gal and a scrumpy, my lover. Oh, never known a night like that. Uh, be proper handsome. And uh, so went in, drank scrumpy, and we did some scene painting. <laughs> what did you paint? Uh, I don't fucking remember. <laughs> <laughs> but it was a good night then. Oh. I don't know. Just, just dipping my cock in the tin, slamming it. <laughs> um, no. Uh, it was, I can't remember what the panto was, uh, uh, but it was great. And he was like, you're really good at this. And then I've never been much in oil painting uh, to look at, but I had the kind of sits look to a degree. I used to can't switch that off. Sorry. <laughs> the vibrating the vibrating vibrations. Yeah. It's it's fixing, fixing the road, guys. Did, did you feel road? that under your seat? That's a, that's a euphemism if ever I heard one. <laughs> Fixing the road, guys. Fixing the road. I actually felt good that vibration going through it. my body. It, was, mm. it vibrated the chair and it's actually tickled my balls. Uh, oh, it started again. It started again. Anyway. I know it's a bit like, you know when you go in a bus, 
sometimes it goes over a wee bump or a, a, a leap in the road. That used to happen to me in the Glen Boy to Coat Bridge bus. I used to wait for that wee leap off the road. Anyway, <laughs> so. <laughs> oh, it's on again. There we go. Oh, oh, oh uh -huh. love to love you, baby. Um, what was I saying? So you're I, painting so a scene. I, <laughs> I had the you've, got a, you've got a gallon of scrum paint, you're painting a scene. Um, and I, I was skinny and peely wally. And I had black hair, and that was the kind of look at the sets in those days. That's mm -hmm. what they kind of went for, was the house style. Were we talking late 70s, early 80s here? Uh, late 70s, cheeky bastard. Uh, no, it was kind of mid 80s. Mid 80s, okay. Yeah, mid to late 80s. And then, yeah, so I used to go in and do get outs and get ins and casual work at the sets, painting and what have you. And then one night, my, one of my best mates, he had been a carpenter. Mm -hmm. A joiner, but he never uh, finished his apprenticeship. And we were both skint. We didn't know where we are going, what we are doing in our lives. And we were at a party. And Ian's a terrible mumbler. And Ian came in, what about me being a soul and I want to be an extra? And I knew that Ian had no aspirations to be in a stage. And I was like, really? Oh, <laughs> look at me dancing, ma'am, dancing. And <laughs> Hold me back. Oh, so. And uh, so I went, well, if you do it, I'll do it. And I'm like, oh, okay. Right. So we shook on it. And he put my name forward wow. and that was it that's how it started so it was a bit of a dare and then I worked as an extra for about four or five years something like that so see that that day so I kind of I worked on the job I never trained but I sort of learned on but the job but did you get the bug for it from that first time you did it then was that was, did you know then this is what you wanted to do I think if I'm honest part of me always knew I wanted to do it but I just never admitted it because it was it just wasn't for you. It, it, it wasn't. You it couldn't, wasn't from my class and my yeah, background. Yeah, you, you, you know where you grew you up. A, yeah, a slap in the face for it meant you wanted to be. Like, you want to be what? Come here, you. <laughs> well, word to yourself. I get doing that mine. Um, yeah, it was unacceptable, and 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 also I didn't know how you did it. It was this alien thing. These, yeah, these were these people on a TV screen. So how could I get from there to there? That's just dumb. So, uh, but in my, I always had quite a rich kind of fantasy. Has mind. it been good for you? Have you? Have you had more highs than lows? Because it is a very precarious yeah. industry. I've been, no, I've been exceptionally lucky. You know, I think, uh, as Ewan was saying, I think in, in many ways, when I went to the sets, a big door opened for me in terms of, yeah, my life hadn't been great for lots of reasons. Uh, and suddenly I, it was like this world opened up. I just was like, I feel I belong here. Mm -hmm. I feel right here. Uh, and were I you, were really were you in loved a it. Were you in a bad place before that? Yeah, just my background and stuff, just my family and things, but uh, which you know I've talked about a lot before, I think. But he's kind of I was just sort of, yeah, we were quite a mad family, drink, violence, what have you, uh, abuse. Um, so I get I moved around a lot, you know. To, my dad would run away, my mum or my only solid person is my grandmother, and yeah, there was lots of kind of madness until. You know, my dad died, my stepfather died in the same year, and then my mum, it was loads of crazy stuff. My mum got my granny put away in a home, and she never saw anybody for about a year and a half. Right. Uh, and then my mum used to leave me, but she'd leave me for like a day. I think the longest she left me was for about a week or something in the morning. But eventually she said she was going to shop one day and never came back. Um, so my brother brought me up. Um, and, and Which again was quite difficult then for two boys to be together. Uh, we had to go through children's panels and what have you. And I was the youngest person in Scotland to have a joint tenancy at a house and things. Oh, really? So, so to grow up quite fast. Quickly, aye. And also you were a kind of black sheep, you know. A lot of people suddenly didn't want their kids to play with you and, mm. and all that. And also my mum had been doing in a lot of people's money. You know, she hadn't been paying the rent and she'd been nicking people's provy money. And So aye, there was a lot of people, even the police were coming to our door. All the time, you know, right. thinking we were at it or we were hiding it or something. There was some kind of fraud or scam going on. Um, so, yeah, uh, it was quite... How long did that go on for? Did you have to deal with that for quite a few years? Yeah, yeah. Right. Uh, till, well, until Kenny and I weren't great either, to be honest. Uh, and Kenny had his own problem. I'll always, always, always uh, be thankful and appreciative that he kind of gave up his life in London and all that to look after his brother and come to this tiny wee mining village in Lanarkshire. Um, not not to um, make light of what you're talking <clears throat> about. It's a bit like Del Boy and Rodney. <laughs> <laughs> 
No, it was fuck all. <laughs> 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 No money banks, no guarantee. <laughs> How are we going to pay the rent this week, Kenny? I don't know. <laughs> sure, fly me, love a duck. Do, 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 do. You've been drinking again? Yeah. Oh, come here, I'll give you a black eye, Rodney. <laughs> no, no, it wasn't like that, you. <laughs> <laughs> you know the story between Dell and Rodney, right? Dell boy is. <laughs> <laughs> I'm I'm this is it. Work. Shut up, you! I can't believe you're trying to justify this. Shut up! Shut up, you! Right? I mean, sh- I can I mean, go and get you a shovel from the road workers right. outside. Fuck! I thought you'd done bad enough with Amy McDonald, but this is like. <laughs> Do you want me to try and justify what I'm saying? What, Do you what, know, why not? I'm right. interested where this is going. <laughs> Feet up, popcorn uh, out. On the, on the fools and horses. Mm-hmm. There's that famous, <laughs> there's that famous <laughs> scene, right, where Del Boy is going into the captain's head to get a cigar. And there's Rodney who stood behind them screaming to Del how Del Boy has always been his rock, right? Do you know the scene I'm talking about here? Nope. And it Del Boy had <laughs> and Del Boy Del Boy being much older brother when the, the mother had passed away in their life at a young age, Del Boy gave up his hopes and dreams to support Rodney and help bring Rodney up. And I as you're telling me your story <laughs> <laughs> like, You've got an older much older brother, right? So ten years a bit like Del Boy, right? And, and then you can see what you're trying to do here, Ewan. Yeah. No. <laughs> so are you all ready for Christmas? <laughs> God love him. Okay, let's take a break there and a few songs for the band. <laughs> Hi, welcome back. Sponsored by Lilettes. <laughs> hey, anyway. Oh, dear. I don't know how my brain thinks, but I'm telling you now, people listening to this podcast or watching it may have thought the same as me, so I'm basically just verbalising what <laughs> no, other people were thinking. I can guarantee you there's not if, a single person who thought that. Can I just say in a serious note, if, if any have listened to this and it's touched the nerve and you're thinking the same as you and fucking get help. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just going to shut the fuck up. Good, good, because right. I'm actually curious, because it is quite a, <laughs> it's a tricky backstory, Gav, it is... Uh, is that why you chose or specialised in comedy? No, no. That's again, a good question. Thank you. I think one it, of us has to be professional in this <laughs> fucking outfit. <laughs> <laughs> well done, Kat. Well done, Kat. Well, I have a win with Tourette's. <laughs> and, uh, oh, that's a good question. <laughs> <laughs> well, Shad's thought of that. <laughs> Oh, wait a minute. Who's your relationship with your brother? Maybe a wee bit like the dog and his master, the littlest hobo. <laughs> um, no. Uh, <laughs> um, no, I think, although there, there is some truth, as I said, and I think I found I could make people laugh uh, and it kept... <laughs> about a distance and kept me from getting to it. So I, I knew I could do that, but I never thought I'd call me. I'm interested in this. I am, I'm sorry. I'm, you just carry on. <laughs> <laughs> but no um, comedy uh, per se. I think it was a I think it, uh, long-winded way of saying basically it was a defence mechanism. Yes. So it was. Uh, it was just a defence mechanism, and also I could make. When I was really young, I made my brother's pals laugh through the personations and things. But then, as I got older, no, the acting thing it, it came. I don't know. It came, like I said, a kind of fluke, and I followed it. And, and when <laughs> I know it's mental. <laughs> and no, so no, it's not why I chose it. I just I think I always wanted to do it, but it was embarrassed. And then I saw this opening, and by that time I was on my own. My brother and I went our separate ways. Oh, Dale uh, and Rodney Parton come Because <laughs> one of us was going to fucking die, basically. 
<laughs> you don't see that not only fools and horses but somebody was going to stab somebody <laughs> uh, so, so we had to go our separate ways really uh, or somebody was going to die and um so yeah and then I, I was I still wanted my big dream was to go to art school art was my thing it was my passion but and I'd, but I'd been told I'd been given all the wrong information the wrong qualifications then I went to study again and then that's when first I think my past caught up with me and I had a bit of a breakdown and never finished and then through that you know, it's all and I've bumbled my way I've never had plans it's always been sliding doors and bumbling about and so that's how I ended up in the sets and then just followed it along and right then, place right time yeah to a degree and <clears throat> And I've never looked back through various people. I've worked with various people, been lucky enough to to meet various people in the nature of the job. I've done lots of great jobs and really varied. So I've done everything from, you know, of course, everybody says still game, but still game took, you know, two weeks of my year up. Uh, you forget that, don't you? Yeah. You forget that you, I mean, everybody that must be thinks, added in 10 shooting schedule Yeah, for that. I mean, it's solid mm-hmm. two weeks of the Klansman, and, you know, you're like, Woof, first on, last off. Because for everyone else, we see that as a lot of your life, and yeah, it yeah. really is just a tiny bit. And it would be, be mental a couple of weeks. Everybody mm. used to call the Klansman the Somme, because you were just in there for two weeks solid, going, right, dig in, here we go. <laughs> and it'd be 19-page scenes sometimes and stuff. I was watching a... Uh, Behind the scenes for all the fools and horses. <laughs> <laughs> no, there's a documentary on Channel Five. I've warned you about touching me. Uh, there, was, <laughs> there was a docu- There was a documentary. You should. You've got the right guest on. <laughs> Jason. There is a there is a phone the guy that plays Trigger. Is he still alive? <laughs> I think he's getting me mixed up. <laughs> I was watching. I was, oh, right, well, there you go. I was watching. I was watching. <laughs> it's connected. It's connected. I was watching the behind the scenes documentary on Channel 5 of Only Fools and Horses, right? Again, another well loved. <laughs> right. Were you alone? <laughs> I was actually. My wife was upstairs. And it's a much, I wonder why. It was, it's, it's a much loved. Uh, British sitcom is it a bit like Still Game a much loved Scottish sitcom and like what you're saying you forget that when you film Still Game that's done in a couple of weeks and it was the same with Only Fools and Horses you think who gives a shit it's a what <laughs> what and you forget that <laughs> when they made <laughs> no wait, wait come out my point come out, but you, because they're part of your life which feels like forever but it's only a blink a blink of an eye for them <laughs> like David Jason and Nicholas Lindhurst and Pastor Merrifield would only be together for like a month or two I know <laughs> television eh? smoking mirrors oh you and God love you but you know what I mean. But you know what I mean. Yeah, yeah. Just keep them talking. So, you, so, you, so what, my point is here. So, but wait, but what that, is your point? What is your point? No. Uh, do you remember when they used to make <laughs> another sitcom, and you think, it's just like and you think, and you forget that those people did that in a shorter time. And you think that when I watched it, I'm thinking, God, I forget that. But now I watch it and I think, that didn't need to, and yet I'm watching it now, but it was made then and it was made probably in a... Sh- oh, isn't that so... Oh, so yeah. mad. And that must be similar right, right. to like another sitcom uh-huh. that they did exactly right. the same. You're taking a piss now. <laughs> taking it, you're fucking gaining it away. <laughs> Hey, okay. <laughs> when does still game come into your life? Uh, <laughs> um, After only feels <laughs> 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 oh, what, what do you? Um, when do, come when does that come into your life? Because initially you're not Bobby, are you? Somebody else that's got the gig. Yeah. Uh, no, no, no. Uh, I was. Were you well, always? Were you always cast to be Bobby? No. No. I, it, it happened through, gosh, lots of things. Because the other thing is I'd been an actor for 15 years for Still Game, so I'd done loads of stuff, loads of straight stuff, loads ah, of right theatre, uh, fair bit of telly and, and all the rest of it. And I was doing another sitcom downstairs, which was funny because we were making it, 
You wouldn't you wouldn't have thought you're bored that it took a little time and yet you'd go but, but, <laughs> but it's, it's a little sick of and uh, no, I did a sketch show in nineteen ninety six uh called Pulp Video. All right. Uh and involved in that was Ford Kiernan, Julie Wilson Nemo, Jane McCarry, Greg Hempel. Gosh, we had lots of other people who so popped. Did Coxie popped do it? Up. No, no. He, he didn't do it. He didn't do it. Is that the one Tom Urie was in? I don't know if Tom was yet. He might have He did tune the fat though, didn't he? He did tune the fat. Yeah. Uh, so I so it was it was a wee bit like a new generation of naked video, really. And the although the funny joke was we all said at the time was like I hope, you know, they change it. We don't want to be the same. We want to be a bit different now, like in a naked video theme that used to be We brought out ours and it kinda went <laughs> oh, for fuck's sake. <laughs> and we were up against Friends as well, so we had no chance. Friends was at its height. Uh, but great experience, great thing to do. And out of that, Greg and I played these two old men at one point, uh, and Ford clocked us like, there's something in these old guys. And out of boredom, when we were filming, we'd be sitting around... And we started talking to old men and just saying really inappropriate stuff about sex or drugs or drinking and things and making each other laugh to pass the time, you know. And like, oh, Christ, you know, I had a full bag of that bloody speed last night. I was off my tits, you know, and I, kind of, I missed the post office and cash my pension book and, and I rattled a full packet of hobnobs. And, you know, <laughs> um, so just madness. <clears throat> And then I think Ford came in with a script. He wrote two sketches, I think. Off the back of watching you two? Yeah, the aye, three of us aye, were aye, talking, but this time just <coughs> speaking in these voices. And he wrote these uh, sketches, and they were the first things we did in front of our live audience. All right. uh, and then we went, went in front of the live audience. The, the warm-up guy was your kind of typical kind of... He picked in a lot of people from, you know, oh, here's a guy wearing glasses. <laughs> you know, look at your jumper, mate. Where would you get that? And you thought, oh, shut up, you talentless prick. And uh, <laughs> so... <laughs> we, <laughs> so the three of us came and they brought us on the set too early. And and so we were stuck dressed as old men in the audience are clocking us and we just started ad living. But we started ripping the piss out of the warm-up guy. And you found you could get away with nonsense and character as these old men. Because you're the old man. Yeah. yeah. And and it was really quite liberating, you know, and it was and we were roaring and the crowd were roaring. And I have to say that man went on to become uh, the head commissioner in uh, BBC Scotland and he never gave us any work. <laughs> but um, <laughs> he's not there anymore. <laughs> but um but I and so through that and I was called Winston. So originally I was Winston, but my Winston was very, very different from what Paul brilliantly came up with. And my Winston was really doddery and, and had a bad memory and he'd been sent to the ice cream van. You can get it on YouTube. Oh, okay. Uh, and he'd been sent to the ice cream van and they, they, they think he's got lost and he comes back with ice creams and they thought he'd been mugged and all that. And I'm trying to remember the other one. I can't remember the other one. But that was how it started, really. Then they wrote a stage play. Uh, and up to the last minute, I was doing the stage play, and I, I was doing a kids' TV series, and they wouldn't release me. And it was only for one day or something. I wrote, <gasps> "Are you like Magnum?" I'm sorry. Where are we going to? <laughs> <laughs> That's a TV show that, but funnily enough, they, they, they just make it in a short time. Right, and so, it, <laughs> yeah, right, right. So you couldn't get released, right? It's a, just reminding me. Remember Tom Selleck? He was meant to be in Diana Jones. Oh, was it? Aye. And Harrison Ford wasn't meant to be getting that role. It was meant to be Tom Selleck, but the TV show wouldn't release him to film Indiana Jones, and he got Harrison Ford to do it. So it's a bit like that. I, I guess so. <laughs> a, bit, a bit like Only Fools and Horses. But also, do you, do you know when Timothy Dalton got the Bond role for uh -huh. The Living Daylights and License to Kill? That was meant to be <laughs> Piers Brosnan. Ah, uh, but, but Piers he was Brosnan doing was doing... Remington Steel. Remington Steel, which is good, actually, because Piers Brosnan was too young. I but, think Piers Brosnan matured like a fine wine but, into but Bond. Just, that's what very made, underrated so, Bond. So when you were not released to do that, what did you miss out on? I missed out on well, initially it was the uh, the live show. So Paul's that came in became Winston and very very different. So Paul wouldn't be Winston a day if you if you had been released by the yeah. TV show. <gasps> Sliding doors moment. Would he have been Bobby? 
Uh, I don't know, actually. That's really interesting. Yeah. I've never it? actually thought. You know, surprisingly, I've actually never <laughs> thought it like that. But um, because if you, you just if, you get want, on if, if you were available to do it, you'd been Winston. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Um, but I wasn't. So that was that. So Paul came in. I went to see the show. It's brilliant. And they started this other life with the show and um, went all over the world. And I, uh, Did it bother you? No, I didn't. I think I was slightly miffed, but you can't, I, you can't do that in my game. You'll drive yourself mental. Well, oh, oh hello, mum. <coughs> Who's that? Is that me? <laughs> I said me. I switched David my phone Jason. off. Hold on. <laughs> I'll be Paul. <laughs> I'll be Paul. Uh, Let's have a pause. Oh God, I'm so sorry. It's all right. I put my phone on silent. You can answer if you want. No, I don't recognise the number. So I meant to Janine Burton. I meant to meet me. What time you meet Jane at? What? There you go. <clears throat> A chandelier to get that. <laughs> 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 you cheeky bastards. <laughs> oh, oh, you're cheese. Sorry about that. Um, nice. No, I think you can't uh, concentrate and things like that. Are you, you but, 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 but when you. You drive yourself mental. But it is it's a your, bit like every what, time but, you go for a job. But you, and you don't. that role. It was you that created that role. Uh, but, but we're very, very different. If you put me next to Paul as Winston, you, that we'd be unrecognisable. But you wouldn't know my, that. And but, my but, Winston but, but you don't know any different. W- wouldn't have survived, you, probably. Oh, really? He was so doddery and, oh, okay. and so... Da- I mean, he's really sort of over the top, shaky old right. man, my okay. Winston, uh, compared to what Paul did. And the whole backstory and everything that was created with Paul and what Paul brought to it, you know, and I'm working in the shipyards and, mm-hmm. and being this angry bugger and... You know, the chemistry between them was brilliant, you know. So, so when they're off travelling the world, you're a wee bit miff, but you get it. Yeah, but as I say, I just don't think you can think like that. You, you would drive yourself crazy. You know, the number of times that you've almost got a job or it's been down to two people or or there's something you really, 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 really wanted and then at last minute, oh, you didn't get it. You know, I've had that and oh, it's horrible sometimes, but if, if you lived your life for that, you would be in a yeah. hell of a mess. There's no point. Um, so no, it, it it didn't really, and I carried on, and I'd always been kind of busy anyway. So, uh, yeah, I carried on doing what I was doing. I was really busy. And I was doing Monica of the Glen for a few years and things like that. And then <coughs> I was doing a sitcom downstairs, and they asked me to uh, to audition for Bobby the Buggers because nobody else auditioned. I don't think so. They, how, how many they did years? It's a wind up. How many years have passed from? But those slight, that sliding door moment where you don't get released from the kids' TV show, they go off and do their own thing, and then they travel the world. How many years passed from that moment to you getting the call to do Bobby? I'm not sure, actually, if I'm honest. Because look, look different, because between times they've done Chewing the Fat now as well. Yes. Uh, and I'd done Velvet Soup. So that was the other odd thing, because we, we're almost in... Because in Scotland, I hate this, but they, do, they made us into kind of competition with each other. Okay. So Velvet Soup, we had a network... Show obviously it wasn't as big as Tune the Fat, certainly not in Scotland, but it was it, it kind of was quite successful in its own way. But if you get interviewed about it, people would always say, "So are you trying to uh, you know get Tune the Fat's crown?" And I'm like, no, we're not trying to get Tune the Fat's crown. You know, and there there can be only one, you know, and one yeah. funny show or the king <coughs> or something. Yes. No, shouldn't we celebrate that we have oh. lots of comedy in Scotland yeah. and that there's loads of people and that there's room for people yeah. and 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 the diversity and how brilliant it is well and that no, I just like that one. Yeah. You know, and like, pick your team. Aye, uh, 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 and I hate that. And uh, so yeah, and and then I went on to do this thing, Snoddy, and they asked me to do Bobby, but the the buggers made me jump through the hoops. Uh, and also, I think there was a wee bit of because I wasn't originally Bobby either. Um, they'd done a pilot, and it was an act called Billy McElhaney, mm-hmm. uh, who used to be in River City, lovely man and brilliant actor. And Billy was Bobby. And so there's wee things you find in Still Game. One of the hangovers was that uh, in the first episode, I think, Bobby refers to his daughter, Leanne, I think. Uh, and you never hear about her again. And then when it became me, that's when the two pints you prick and stuff like that, and insults and your frilly knickers and, and all that, and Roberta and, and ripping What was your favourite insult of all of them? My favourite, I think, is probably everybody's favourite, and it's not so much the straightforward look who, look who it is. My favourite is probably... Um, you're fairly putting on the beef jack. 
You know, what was that? It's because every time I shag your wife, she makes me a sandwich. <laughs> it was... <laughs> I do like that. It's, it's just that wildy and wit. Would you, um, would you like a Bobby the Barman prequel? Prequel? What, some other fucker playing me? Or a sequel? Because <laughs> you're the only one that's still here, aren't you? You're the only one that's still alive. Well, technically, still alive. he's the, the only one that survives. Mm. Uh, I know the fans always... Talk about that. Yeah, I mean, there's been some brilliant ideas, but th that lies with the boys, really. And mm. I don't know. I I think some things are better just left. I think what the boys did was, uh, I, I know there's always going to be people, bring it back, and why don't you bring it back? And we miss it. And But I think what the boys did was really, really brave, you know, and right, and leave it at its peak and yeah. walk away and leave the, the legacy and the memories, you know. And I, we kind of addressed it with live shows, especially the last live show. Mm. That everybody dies in the last, I mean, including Bobby dies in the, the final mm -hmm. show. Um, so so yeah, I mean, people have come up with nice ideas. I liked one uh, with, with somebody talking about Bobby just having a bar in Spain or something. Oh, I'd love you that. Know, <laughs> something like that. Which, in a dorm or somewhere. Aye, aye, aye that uh, would be good. You can imagine, I. <laughs> <laughs> Prick. <laughs> How often do you hear that line when you're walking the street or you're in the shops, two pints pricks? Pretty much every day. Yeah. Every day? Is it nearly every day? Pretty much. Yeah. I mean, you heard it when you walked in here. <laughs> I get it everywhere. Uh, I've had it do all over the that? world. No, I mean, it depends. There was a time where... Um, People didn't recognise it, then it started happening. Then you got it all the time, and then it was really bizarre because you were just getting it. I've had it in the States. I've had it in Barbados. <laughs> I've had it... Um, just this voice. I've had it... It's the voice in my head again. Um, yeah, I've had it all over the world. When you look at Still Game Aye. and the success of it, uh -huh. my kids, who weren't even born... When it first appeared oh, on the fuck, screen, this is going well now. Right, <laughs> right. Now, right. Let's get into the age here. But, but, well, 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 well we're about to finish anyway. So oh, let's, yeah. let's, 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 son? let's get. My kids are obsessed by Still Game. It's going through the generations. I mean, because I was watching it and I keep watching it. It's on Netflix as well. My kids love it. They know the, the catchphrases. Do you find that your audience, it's not just. Like Cat and I in our age, but you're finding there's a younger audience who's watching it and loving it just as much as yeah. we did when it first came no, out. No, definitely. I think it was one of those things. Uh, uh, I think we were really lucky in lots of ways. I think it was a slow burner, and also it was the kind of rise of the DVD as the well, box sets and stuff like that. And I remember I bumped into a family coming out in RS McCall's or something, and they they went, "Oh, we just we're on our holidays there in Thailand." I was like, "Oh, smashing!" Watched you every night. <laughs> And a lot of people would do that, take DVDs and then all sit together. Oh, sit together. On their hobby, watch, on on their hobbies. Hobbies. I, I all right, can't no need to sense <laughs> What? I, I, I fucking wouldn't. It. I all right. <laughs> it's like folk that take mints. <laughs> <laughs> What's your problem with that? No, I've always I got know, a spare case for mints. I know a woman that wouldn't go on holiday without 12 square sausage. It's true. Oh, <laughs> anywhere, anywhere, anywhere she anywhere went, in the world. she would go to the Savoy Centre in Glasgow and get 12 square sausages. Take them where? Take them with her. Everywhere she went. What what is some kind of just bargaining like system. No, she just loves square sausages. Tell you what, give me the heroin and I'll give you like half a pound of slice. In here. <laughs> what are the roles that you'd still like to play? Or, or... Uh, Morton's. <laughs> um... <laughs> I've got you thinking that with the square sausage now. I know, that's that. what it was. Uh, rolls, rolls. That's the bubble. What's, 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 you know, still left? Takes us back to square do. sausages and what's his face? Remember yeah, that? I remember that, aye. <laughs> um, I don't know. I've, I kind of stopped that nowadays because I just look into the the darkness and death now. Uh, <laughs> just lucky another day above ground, if I'm honest, cat. So... Oh, I fucking laugh it up, guys. It's the young team in the corner. Uh, <laughs> I let the old guy talk about death. <laughs> <laughs> no, um, He's like 27 or something. How old are you? Jesus. 24. These pants I've got on are older than that. <laughs> uh, no, I don't... So, 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 so I don't well, know. we're coming full circle now. Now that you are nearly 60, you never answered the question at the start of the podcast. Oh, my memory's a way to fuck, right. son. Right, so you're nearly 60. Do you think about your age now that you're yeah. getting older? You do? Yeah. 
Okay. Um. <laughs> no, I do. Well, it's kind of well uh, to answer both those questions. One is, I just think, I think when you're young and you 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 think I want this, I want that, and I want to be, and you're trying to, you know, plan things and all that kind of thing. And I think as you get older, it's very freeing, and you just think, no, you know, I'm quite happy to go with the flow. You know what you don't want to do. And you're kind of open to things. And I've been really, really lucky. You know, I've done everything from operas and musicals to straight drama to still game, obviously. You know, lots lots of various things. So, or, you know, more recently, my first love was back to radio. So doing like radio drama and doing some, like, we've done this big series that's on just now about Burke and Hare and playing Burke. Um, so do you feel a more, do you feel you've got a bit more of a, f- what's what I'm looking for here? Do you feel more free the older you get? Yeah, I think you, you, so. You don't you worry jettison, about you don't you worry jettison about, a lot of things. You know, you, um, your priorities shift and change. And I think, sorry to bring it up, but I think pandemic did that for a lot of people as well. What, what your priorities were, and and I, for me personally, it's become simplified. What I love and what is important to me, and and how I get on, and watching people. I was listening to Brian O'Sullivan's podcast recently. He said a beautiful thing, and it really kind of chimed with me. And he was talking about, um, you know, he, he said, you know, I'm paraphrasing hugely, but he, he was talking about, I think I started to resent about my job and various things. You can get bitter and you can get twisted and you can get resentful in our industry. And I think that's what happens if you do think, that should have been me or that could have and should have and that didn't and that bugger got that and, and all that. And life's too short for that that rubbish. You've got you've got to kind of enjoy the wee things and smell the roses, you know. Uh, and that's kind of what I do. I'm kind of sort of quite happy with me and my wee dug and reading and cutting about. But he said that he had decided that uh, acting or show business had been the thing he'd been involved in longest in his life, longer than family, longer than anything. It's the most mm. constant, consistent kind of thing. Uh, and that he was going to embrace it rather than fight against it. Uh, he, he phrased it a lot better than I am, but, but I thought it chimed him and I thought, you're absolutely right, actually. You should befriend it and go with it and go with the flow rather than uh, yeah. Just you know. see where it takes you. Yeah, a bit and, of gratitude yeah. along the way. Yeah. And uh, aye, it's it's the best way to be. Aye, so I think. And see what man, just see what pops up. Um, it's now time for the bowl of destiny. It's the final thing we do on the podcast. But see, before we do the bowl of destiny, have you ever met David Jason? <laughs> I thought you were going to lead into. Have you ever met David Bow? But no, David Jason. No, no. <laughs> You've not. No. I'm just curious. Yeah. Just that the only fools and horses have been like a running theme. So no, I just what, thought, could you just not get them on this? And that's why I'm here. <laughs> <laughs> did you ever meet David Bowes? I know he's your dad. No, I touched them. Oh, you touched them. Oh. When did you touch him? His foot, I'm guessing. Was it, he on his stage? hand. He held my hand. He held oh. your hand. He held my hand and he sang Hello, he's Space a, Boy. He's a hero, isn't he? Yeah. Oh. You're a hero. Is. And no, you he, got to pick up the award for him at the Barrowlands, oh, didn't so you? you did. yeah, that yeah, must have I been did. incredible. Yeah, no, amazing. I, yeah, I've, I, yeah, as long as I can remember, he was my hero and my kind of North Star. And if anything, he actually is, it sounds really corny, but he's actually a person that says responsible in many ways for who I am or what I am. Just in terms of. As long as I can remember, I looked up to him and, and, and this really inspirational person who I think, apart from the, the, the obvious things of musically and chameleon-like and fashion and all that kind of thing, I think somebody like Bowie was really, really inspiring and, and at that kind of age when things were events when an album came out and you went, you bought it and you held it and you listened to it really intensely and you read lyrics and what did it look like and, you know, all that kind of stuff. But if you followed somebody like Bowie, he was always into, you know, it was other things that influenced him, whether it be m- musically or movies or literature. or So he was a kind of educator as well as a performer. So so through a lot of his work, I would, yeah, I, I kind of self-educated myself. Uh, and a lot of things he followed, I followed. You mentioned the North Star, that tattoo. Uh, black Star. Your Black Star. Yeah. That's his last album. Uh, yeah, I got it what, a day, two days after he died, uh, as a kind of mark of respect. Uh, not starting your arm. Show it yeah. to the camera, just in case. Oh, yeah, there you go. Was that, was that an awkward part of your, <laughs> your arm? Oh, I don't know. I'll show you. The, no, <laughs> not, that <laughs> not that one. You show me that one. But in yeah, the but it could also be for the Barrowland stars because they're famously well, on the, the roof as well. That's, uh, that's where right, I held right. his hand. Was the Barrowland? Oh, was it? Yeah, I went to see him at the Barrowland. I'd seen him in New York in his 50th birthday concert, and and then the same year he played the Barrowland, got in, and I'd steel toe cap boots. <laughs> 
I'd be working and everybody was crowd surfing. And I turned around to my mate and went, I've got to get up there, I've got to get up there. And he went, you've got steel toe cap boots on though. And I went, I don't give a fuck. <laughs> and he threw me up so I've probably got lots of claims uh, <laughs> fractured skulls and as I get the funny thing was I get closer and closer and closer to him I was like oh my god and he was singing to me and he was going I love Spice Boy as he was looking at us but as I get closer and closer the crowd started turning me around and I was like no 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 <laughs> and I was so what happened did the, I was the going backwards. hand stretched out yeah, I was so I was like oh, and everywhere I turned my head I couldn't see him and then I just felt my hand being grabbed and Oh. And I thought, and I just knew it was him, and Amazing. he kind of held me really tightly and singing. And, and unfortunately, we didn't have phones, and my mate saw it and all that. But he sang <laughs> "Hello, Space Boy" to me, held me. Oh, what's and then memory? years later, picked up the award on his behalf at the bar. Lovely. And then from that, I did all sorts of things, but singing with his band and Aye. becoming Incredible. mates with his band, and yeah, still keep contact with. I, I've done. I, I've. Done everything I possibly could apart from meet him. Sadly, yeah. it was the bittersweet thing was his death brought me closer to him in a funny kind of way. Wow. But, yeah. Follow Destiny? Seems like a good time for him. Okay. Well, let's get rid of these silly clothes first, don't we? No, 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 no. no. no, no, no. <laughs> Again, it's not that type of podcast. Oh, sorry. It started with a wet lettuce, Shun. No, that's true. Started with the keys. Dee, 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 dee. Uh, the Bowl of Destiny, right? So there are a number of, um, uh, there's a variety of questions here, um, Gavin Mitchell. And um, you will pick a question, you will read it to yourself. If you mm. like that question, you must answer. If you don't like that question, you must then throw that question away. And the next question you take, you must read and also answer. You gonna do if I don't get a fucking polish? <laughs> <laughs> Go on then. <laughs> Take a question. Bowl of destiny. So you just want to use your hands and yeah. sort of knead that until it's sort of room temperature. That's it. That's it. So well, just read it. You don't have to answer this one if you don't like it. There's a mix of questions. Oh, kind of easy. But you want to, do you want to? Do I try another one then? I'll, I'll answer this dead. This is dead quick. Um... I'll do another one if you want. But uh, what song always makes you feel better when you're feeling down? That's, that's, good. that's, a, good that's a good one for you. That's a good one for you. Uh, I would say Petula Clark's Downtown. How does that go, Gavin Mitchell? <laughs> the lights are much brighter there. You can forget all your troubles, forget all your cares, and go downtown. Things will be great when you're downtown. Uh, so yeah, downtown. Uh, I just think it's, it? it's a brilliant. But yeah, it was written, I think, in the month and year I was born. I thought that you were taking the piss there. Did you? No, I see a lot of people do. I did. Oh, I did a podcast recently with Chesney Hawks. And oh, the one and only. The, the one and only. I've hang out, and he. One of the things was you had to pick a favorite phrase that kind of influenced your life, and you had to pick a favorite song. And I didn't realize. I thought oh, I give my choice now. I thought, they're probably just playing a song. And I was getting lots of pressure on it, so I half-heartedly went, oh, Downtown, because it is my favourite song. And I went, Downtown, and oh, the likes of Bowie. Oh, Heroes. And Heroes I would never put down as my favourite song, but everybody would assume that. And I sent it to them. But I never realised it meant that Chesney Hawks sang the song to you. Oh, oh, oh. So, wait a minute, Chesney, so Chesney Hawks sang Petula Clark. No, he ended up he sang Heroes. Oh, did he? <laughs> Lost. <laughs> I thought he would have gone for the Pajula Clark. Yeah. But no, he went for the. Oh, you, I thought you're not going to attempt heroes. That's right. <laughs> and he did. And he did. Gavin Mitchell, I'm not quite sure what happened in the past hour. I'm, try, I'm still trying to. I can't believe it's been. I'll tell you what happened. He talked about his wet lettuce. I tried to ask sensible questions. You butted in every single time I did. You and talked about um, only fools and horses. horses a lot. Um, Next week, can David I Jason also just say I've, the show. I've never ever seen an episode of Only Films and Horses, oh. not one. Do you know what you should do? You should have done it. Do you look like you're going to punch me? <laughs> Bobby the barman could fall in between the space and the bar. Uh, mm -hmm. You must have seen that. There, <laughs> iconic. Uh, why don't you and I have a weekend together? And I'll, br I'll bring my box set round <laughs> I'm sorry. of Only Fools and Horses, <laughs> and we'll watch the Jolly Boys outing when they go to Blackpool. Is that my taxi there? Oh, brilliant. <laughs> <laughs> taxi for Gavin! Um, 
It's been, I don't know what this has been the past hour or so. It's been fun. I, I think a, a lot happened. Oh. A lot was said. I'm um, certainly going to have a shower and burn all my clothes when I go home. <laughs> <laughs> um, we can't thank you enough. You've been a friend for a very, very long time, and we do love you dearly. You know that. Oh. You know that. And this has been an absolute joy. Gavin Mitchell, everybody. I love you individually and as a group. 